Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldier Talk, the podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show, we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today, I have two guests with me. Uh, I'm going to allow you guys to introduce yourself, so uh, go go ahead and start one at a time. Go ahead. Uh, Sergeant Griggs, he had uh, 44th Med, Fayetteville. Sorry. Um, uh, so... Uh, I want to give you. Uh, I want you guys to give your name, rank, and MOS. Okay. Uh, name, uh, Bashan Griggs, MOS, uh, eighty nine Bravo, ammo specialist, rank sergeant. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher John Gatson the second. I'm a sixty eight Mike by trade, uh, and that is a nutrition care specialist. But I currently serve as the equal opportunity advisor for. 44th Medical Brigade. Okay, so uh, we had a discussion not too long ago uh, where you guys was basically, we was talking about confident soldiers versus knowledgeable soldiers. So the argument was when you have a confident soldier that they actually have the confidence to lead soldiers, but they might not be too knowledgeable about their job versus somebody who's knowledgeable about their job, but they might not have the confidence to lead soldiers. So, Sergeant Griggs, elaborate on what, 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 what the points you were trying to make. I feel as if I'm trusting, I'm trusting someone who's had time and time again been called upon to do and perform their job rather than someone who is coming into the job New, don't know too much about the job and being called upon to perform the task. So I'd rather go over I'd rather go over time or experience than someone who's just confident. I got you. Uh so basically what I'm getting from that, I'm getting saying like uh you're saying that somebody who's actually got experience in their job versus uh, somebody what? Someone who's uh confident in uh leading mm-hmm. and be um, able to regurgitate information they've gathered from their from the job, but they're not they're not experienced in the job. Okay. So, how I feel about it is like, I really, I feel like. Somebody who might not be knowledgeable in their job, uh, uh, but they confident enough to learn it, I feel like that is that would be better than what you're trying to say. Oh, so so you're saying you'd rather take okay, for example, infantrymen. Mm-hmm. Do you think they'd rather have another infantry, an infantry MOS behind them in a the battlefield, or? Not not calling out a certain MOS or someone who's uh, ninety two Fox. Mm-hmm. Nah, when it comes to something like that, of course you want to be with somebody who actually knows their job. Yes, but life and death. Yeah, but like a person, what you're trying to say is they so focused on how you supposed to shoot. I need to breathe. Yeah. I need to do this before I shoot. I need to breathe without having the actual confidence to say f it. I'm going to go for what I know. Yeah. So what I'm getting from you is like you rather take a person who basically an overthinker instead of somebody who's willing to just lash well, out. He, this soldier's not able to, he's not able to communicate his job. He's able to show you his job. He can't communicate it to you. I got you. That's it. So I guess how, how you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I feel completely opposite to that because I feel like when you have a soldier who's confident, you can breed that competence in in them. You know what I'm saying? You could teach them. Whereas if you have a soldier that only knows their job, but they don't have the core leadership competencies embedded inside of them, then it's kind of like you just work in a nine to five. Like, and this isn't a nine to five. We promote based off of potential. Yes. We don't promote off of, like, how well you can turn a wrench, although that's a part of it. 
but your potential to lead soldiers. That's that's what I'm talking about. And the and something we was talking about because we were going off of who would be who would be promoted. That's what we were going off of. Like who would you promote in the situation? Would it be the person who's confident or the person who knows their job? Mm-hmm. And I'm picking the person who knows their job due to just experience. But I don't I don't think that just knowing your job means you should be promoted. Okay, yeah, but if you don't know your job, would you promote would you promote someone into a new MOS? What are you what are you what are you saying? I'm, I'm would you so I wanna reclass. I wanna reclass to what, what what's your MOS? Nine two Yankee. I wanna reclass to a nine two Yankee. I know nothing about it. Would you promote me? What you mean promote you like as far as what? I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about your MOS. And say I've been in I've been in your in a, uh, your NOS, your MOS for what four months. Would you just promote me? Would based, I be based off promoted? potential? Yes, based off potential of just trying to learn your MOS. No, so of course when you first get up under a leadership or whatever, uh, of course they're gonna show you like the basic things, yeah. but like. Of course, you ain't going to know everything within four yeah. months. But based off your potential, mm-hmm. are you showing initiative? Are you, you know, doing the things that I can see, okay, he's he's willing to learn or he, you know what I mean, willing to be promoted? Yeah, I, I would promote you based off your uh, potential. Yeah. So there's something happening in our S6 where we're about to get a new S6. So, and if I was one of those soldiers that's coming here to to be at six for this brigade, and I don't know anything about my job, what's what's going to happen? I think you're trying to have two arguments. Yeah. You're trying to say somebody who's completely oblivious mm-hmm. to a certain skill yeah. set. And that's what I'm saying. That's not, that's, that's not plausible, though. Why like, that's really not that? plausible because select, educate, train, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That program, AIT, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they went to, they get the right, little, you're reclassing to change your MOS. Yeah. So, and if you pass all of the tests, there will be some competence there. Some, some competence. Like I said, then this soldier has all the competence in their field. Who would, who would be promoted? The person who. Who are you promoting? Are you, I'm, I'm, are promote, you promoting I'm, pro, this I'm promoting both of them. Like, right. But, yeah, but the argument was. So you have, so say you have like one slot, though. You have one slot. You're going to send your senior, your I'm senior sending specialist. The, I'm sending the confident you, soldier to the board. Yeah. Not to the board. The board's been over. You know, they both passed the board. They're, they're eligible. One just reclassed. He doesn't know anything about his field. You have this other soldier. He's promotable. Mm-hmm. That that has confidence, but the no, he does. He, I mean, he has. He can he can show you what he can do. Mm-hmm. He just can't relay the information to you. So then, how is he expected to be promoted to lead soldiers? Exactly. He's who who's gonna go? He's gonna he's no, gonna do no, more. You can't do that. He's gonna you be doing can't more do that. than this soldier who's just confident because. But you can teach due to knowledge. You can teach somebody. Soldiers are. You can teach soldiers. You yes. can teach soldiers. Yes. He's he's will. He's he's able to learn these the so like those yeah. those skill sets where he could pronounce and regurgitate information. Yes, he can learn these things. Right. I'm saying just do off of confidence and me going head first, saying I can lead, take charge. Doesn't I don't know anything. But I need to humble myself. Are you right? saying I need to humble myself and get this knowledge? Yeah. <laughs> I need to humble myself and get this knowledge from specialists or someone who's been in this career, this this field for a good amount of time. Right? No. Then how is he going to learn? What do you mean, how is he going to learn? How's That's why learn? they have manuals for. Most people will not get in. <laughs> Most That's what they have. Manual. Dash tens, manuals, TMs, trainer circulars. Like, if you want to be educated on something to make yourself as proficient as possible, you will crack open the books. You ain't going to be like, well, I don't know it. 
I'm super confident, though. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about a person who's hungry for the next position of leadership. They're going to seek out those things. Mm. While this soldier knows. He knows his job, but he can't lead anybody. Why can't we teach him that? Why can't we teach him how to? You just said he don't have the confidence to be able to. He don't know how to do that. But both these soldiers can learn. One has to learn the job. One has to learn to speak up. But one is easier. The, it's easier to get somebody to learn a job than it is to teach them how to be confident. You can, you can promote this soldier that knows his job and put him in a leadership position, and he's going to be in a position where he has to speak up. You could promote this soldier where he's just confident, willing to learn, head first, taking charge, but he doesn't know his job. But at a point, there becomes a separation once you start to get to higher levels of leadership. Yeah. It's no longer hands dirty doing the work. It's managing, understanding your people and your personnel, putting those talented soldiers in position to be excellent. Yeah. That's that's what you do when yeah. you, you know, get higher up. And like where I come from, that is your p- as an E seven, yeah, senior uh, senior NCO, that's your position. But E six and down, that's that's not it. You should s- be starting the process though. Yeah, because as a team a, leader, you're starting. You the have process, soldiers. Yeah. As a squad process. leader, you have more soldiers. As yes. a platoon sergeant, yes. you have even more soldiers. As a first but, sergeant, you have a company. Yes. Like that is true. That is true. But as when E six when E seven hits when you that uh, when you hit that E seven. That's is that's when you're in full effect of okay, you're stepping back, mm-hmm. and you're, you're you're putting soldiers where they need to be put. I don't know about all that. I mean, yeah, you're 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 basically managing. <coughs> yeah, but I I think that you also have to once you become a sergeant, mm-hmm. like that's when management starts. Yeah, you are charged with. Junior personnel, am I right? Yes. Then what are you saying? I'm saying you're in full effect. And I'm still out there with the soldiers. That's what I'm saying. I'm but still you should be given on. purpose, direction, and motivation as well. Yes, while I'm hands-on. Yes, but you should start the process of, all right, this is yeah. what I need my soldiers to know how to do. This is how I should counsel them. This yeah. is how I should talk to them about yeah. And I'm being saying better. at E7, that is when it's in full effect. That's our first class. Yes, it is. Yes. So you've already been through the stages of doing that. Now as E7, you are full effect managing soldiers. As our first class, that is correct. But as E6, E5, we are still hands-on with soldiers and managing as well. But you have to create... the. You have to create the muscle memory in order to know how to do it once you become a our first class. What do you mean by that? You got to elaborate. I'm going to have to elaborate. You have to elaborate on that. So if I become a manager or if I start the process of managing my soldiers appropriately as a sergeant, Mm -hmm. by the time I become a staff sergeant, I'm proficient at it, at managing my soldiers, teaching them all of the things that they need to know, having all of the tools that they need to have, knowing right place, right time, right uniform, knowing the, the training circulars, the regulations, all of the things so that they can be proficient at their job. By the time I'm a sergeant first class, I am in charge of the staff sergeant and the sergeants. So I am imparting that managerial skill to them. So, yeah, if I see somebody and they don't know their job, I'm going to go make corrections. I'm going to give them advice. I'm going to give them mentorship. And then I'm going to send them off into the wild to make the best decision. And this is you while you're in E7, right? Yes, this is while I'm a sergeant first class. Yeah. In E6. He's still going to be out there managing. Not as much. Giving the tools you're giving him. Yeah. But hands-on as well. Not as much. Not as much as the E5s. Not as much as the sergeant. You're correct. And at, as soon as the E5s get, as soon as the E5 e, hit E6, then we're going to get that information from the E6 that you gave him. He's E7. Yes. But That's I'm still you. taking the confident soldier. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't move me from there. <laughs> you can't move me from there. I'm taking the soldier who's confident. <laughs> Are you taking a doctor to operate on one of your loved ones? That's a straw man argument, and we ain't finna do that. 
But that's what I'm saying. That's a, that's a made-up straw man argument, and we ain't finna do that. This this doctor. <laughs> You're about to make the most <laughs> wild scenario, and this, this is going to be ridiculous. Don't speak. <laughs> he don't speak. He has a speech impediment. But he knows his job. And he has experience. Or, and he's done, he's done 10 operations, which, which your loved one needs. This other doctor, on the other hand, has two operations, right? And very confident, and able to and able to walk you through. Yo, you, <laughs> this is so wild. That's what I'm saying. That's a, that's a wild scenario. That's, I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm look. taking the doctor that's done it ten times rather than the doctor that did it twice. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, but we're not going off by it like that. We're saying. Is equal, but somebody who don't have like the confidence to, you get what I'm saying? Uh, they're not eloquent with their words. I ain't gonna say yeah. that, but like they not, they can't, they can't uh, portray it. You get what I'm saying? They don't have the confidence to like, uh, basically the, the confidence to lead soldiers and to like basically to, you get what I'm saying? So. You rather have he, a doctor who not, knows what they're doing, yeah. a doctor who like confident enough to say, "No, nah, we gotta save this dude life right now. Like this is life and death situation. Yeah. I'm not going to rely and, on somebody who's like." And and where is that dude gonna go? Where is this loved one gonna go? What you mean? Where is this loved one gonna go? Where is he gonna go to? Which doctor is he gonna go to when they say he needs to be? It's a life and death situation right now. I have somebody who don't have the confidence to tell these nurses, okay, go get that, go get that, go get this. I need that. Mm-hmm. He just know his job. He, he yeah. can't facilitate. He knows what he needs. And he can show. Mind you, he's done it 10 times. He don't have the confidence to basically, I get what you're saying, yeah. but like he don't have the comfort. That's, that's what we're saying. He don't have the confidence to basically, I mean, lead. you can know your job, right? but like. He, yeah. he don't have the confidence to lead. Yeah. So, like First the doctor, let's use your scenario, right? Yeah. Let's let's do this, I like right? That. I like that. So, I'm a doctor. Yes. Super confident. Only done the surgery twice. Yes. Only done it twice. Yeah. Only done it twice, right? So, I'm gonna study up, read up, get all of the information that I can get, and then I'm going to perform. The surgery, because you need to be able to command a room if you're in that situation. Say that person starts to code. What do doctors do? Say that. Wait, let me finish. Let me cook. Let me cook. Okay. The person starts to code, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll say code blue. They go into cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. You got the the doctor with the speech impediment. No disrespect to people with speech impediments. You know, we all have, you know, different challenges and things of that nature. So he has a speech impediment. Can't, and he doesn't. He's not an effective communicator. Mm-hmm. When that person starts to code, mm-hmm. he's not going to be able to command the room to save that person's life. Whereas the person with only two surgeries under his belt, with the confidence to know how to actually conduct the procedure, because mm-hmm. you didn't say he didn't know how to do the procedure. You just he's say he got it twice. Okay, so what? Does he know what he needs fully for this procedure? I would rather the person who can command the room mm-hmm. and take care of the patient. Should things go south, Mm -hmm. you got the doctor who's good at his job and that's great, but he does is not an effective communicator. Mm -hmm. Taking the person, I'm not taking him. I'll say that. Okay. Okay. Is that could that be considered an opinion? That's not an opinion. Uh, That's just right. That's the right thing to do. Someone, a doctor. (laughs) So you're we're we're talking about experience here. Experience, experience. Yes, experience matters. But I'm saying for the scenario that you gave me, I'm not yeah. taking the doctor who can't command the room. Yeah, I, or the surgeon, I, rather. I feel as if that's a... Because he can't do it by himself. Right. He's exactly. Not doing it. Exactly. He's done it 10 times. Though. But he doesn't... He's not doing it by himself. He's done it 10 times. Quietly. By Ooh. himself? He did it by Quietly. himself? What is that doctor that came in and do, did it twice, right? he done it twice. He's a doctor, who is, though. Who is he watching? Who is he shadowing? Okay, he might be shadowing somebody at U- UCLA Medical Center. I don't know. He's shadowing. He's shadowing the doctor that's done. You it can't. You can't keep relayering this now. We what, even, you keep. You keep adding but you, layers. No, no, I'm not adding layers. <laughs> he's are. shadowing the doctor. What doctors do that? 
They shadow what they need to learn. So he's it's a resident in- behind the doctor who'd done it ten times. Yes. Then I'm definitely taking the dude who can command the room because he's learned from the he's learned from the best, right? He's learning. No, no, he learned from the best. He's done it twice, he's and he's learning. he's a resident behind the doctor who is really yes. really good. Then I'm taking yes. the guy, the newer guy, yeah, to do the surgery. What are the chances now? What do you mean? What are your chances now? You're asking random questions. No, but what are your chances? Because I'm going with someone who's done it ten times rather than someone who's done it twice. And you're look, and you're following me. So you're what? watching me perform the act. I'm watching you perform, but I'm not learning anything from you because you're not teaching me anything. I'm teaching you by showing you. Everybody don't learn like that. A lot of people don't learn like that. But okay, then. But there's a lot more people that do learn like that. Though. I hear you, but you you keep dancing around. I'm saying experience over confidence. Experience matters, yeah. yes. Yeah, so I do, I do see what you're saying, but like, we was kind of wrapped around like it, the different scenarios is basically subjective, but like far as our profession and what we do, mm. of course you want to have we promote all potential. Yeah. So that's what basically we was trying to get at. Yeah. So you want the soldier who just know their job. I want I want someone who's has experience beside me, rather than someone who's just confident. Soldiers don't know anything until you teach them. Exactly. Exactly. So if I'm He's have been a thought, but he can't he, just because you know something doesn't mean you should be in a position of, of leadership. You can teach at your rank. Again, you said he's not good at doing anything. He's just good at his job. He's good at his job. Okay, that's yeah. it. He's good at his job. The army is not just your job though. Yeah. It's not yeah. just it's not just being an eighty nine Bravo ammunition specialist, right? That's true. You got to be able to rep. You got to be able to run. Got to drive. Be, drive. Yeah. What else? Come on. It's a it's a lot of things. Shoot, move, things communicate, that all yeah. that. Yeah. It's a lot. So that's what I'm saying. You're taking this and just saying just a job. No, that's one part. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying who's because this all started off of who would you promote? The confident person. Just because he's confident. Because they can be taught. Mind you, you have a senior specialist over here that knows his job. All he has, all, all, all that's wrong with it is that he's not, he's not confident in regurgitating what he knows or, or able to uh, brief, brief in a, a meeting or something. That's a part but, of it. Yeah, you... I, I understand what you're saying. Like, you want to still continue to pour into that o- other soldier. Mm-hmm. But if I have the complete package to my right. The complete package? What you mean? All, and all he's missing is he or she is missing. Is just learning something? Is just learning the small nuances of their job. Yeah. I'm taking that soldier. I think that's an opinion. That's not an opinion. That's an opinion. If we're saying you promote off of potential, it's not an opinion. Yeah, yeah, the army promotes off of potential, but if it, I'm thinking it as if it was life and death, but it's I'll not be life taking and death. someone who has experience. Even in a life and death situation, it is life and death. Even if it's in a life or death situation, you're still taking the person who has confidence. You don't want the per. You Another don't, example: you don't, you don't, Seaburn. You don't. I want, am not. I am not. A Seaburn MOS. Okay. Right? I'm not a, a Seaburn MOS. This is true. We know. So if we were deploying into a toxic environment, would you trust me? Because I am so confident in giving orders. I'm, I, mind you, I, just, I, I am not a Seaburn MOS, and I don't know anything about Seaburn. But I have manuals. I'm reading off manuals to tell you what to do. And then would you trust me or someone who's in had it have experience in Seaburn? This is their MOS. Would you trust them? Well, we I re- trust them. I trust the person with experience. Yeah. But if you also look at it, we ain't got no choice but to trust you. Cause you are Seaburn in Life and death. I'm just saying, like, like we don't but we don't have a choice yes. in who we get. Yeah. 
but you said you're digging into the manuals, you're training the, the yeah. tasks, correct? Yeah. Then I'm going to trust that you know what, what you're doing in order to keep me alive. But there's two, you have two options now. Oh, so now you're going to give me an option. No, that's what I'm saying. You have two options. You have two soldiers. Of course, I'm going to take the person with experience. But for our particular that's situation, what that, though. If for our particular situation, it's just you. What do you mean it's just me? You are him. Hemi Neutron, that's you. <laughs> I, you just, are him. I'm just saying, I think experience Experiences is will experience always be important. It will always be important. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That you that you think about the level of proficiency. Yeah. But then you have to add layers to that. Yeah. Because if, if, if we just promoting off knowing how to do your job, listen. Yeah. <laughs> listen. It's our major. Yeah. Like, top of the chart, top of the food chain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... They, d- they just don't know how to do their job. They know how to lead, coach, mentor, teach, yeah. like train those proficient, train those things that they need to be proficient in. Yeah. Because if you're a good leader, then you're not going to have no soldiers who are just knowledgeable and not just have no soldiers who are confident. You're going to have the total package because it's a total soldier concept. You feel me? I mean, you lost, but it's okay. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> It's an opinion. Uh, it's not an opinion. Sorry, and Greg. Sorry, first class Gaston basically uh, kind of uh, gave their uh, synopsis on being confident versus knowledgeable. Uh, make sure you guys let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, also, make sure uh, you guys like this video. Uh, make sure you guys follow the podcast on Instagram at Soldiers Talk the Podcast. And, uh, This has been another episode of Soldiers Talk, the podcast, and I'll see you guys in formation.